Today we're going to be making a dish uh, from this cookbook I got. It's called Bottom of the Pot. It's a Persian cookbook. I highly recommend uh, you guys buy it if you like uh, Persian food. Uh, the dish I'm going to be making today is called a Koresh Gourmet Sabzi. And it translates to a fresh herb stew. Because we're going to be using a lot of parsley, a lot of uh, green onions, a lot of uh, cilantro, and another herb called uh, fenugreek. So when I make this dish today, I'm not going to be giving you the exact quantities of ingredients. And the reason for that is because you guys should go out and uh, buy this cookbook. I, I highly recommend it. You could also follow the author on Facebook. Uh, just type in bottom of the pot, just like the name of this book. All right, so let's start cooking right now. Uh, the first step to do is to take some onions and you dice them. Uh, what I like to do when I dice onions to make it very uh, simple is there's a root end, you leave that intact, and you take the other end and you chop that, that tip off. You put my, I put my stuff in a little container which has all my garbage so I can just throw that away uh, later instead of going back and forth to the garbage. Uh, so after you take that tip off, you put the flat side down and you cut the onion in half right through the root. The next step to do is take the outer layer of the onion off. of both ends. And then what I like to do is you just uh, make a small uh, slices, the sizes of the dice that you're going to want. Uh, don't cut all the way through to the root. Just get right next to the, to the root. And then what you do is you put it on its side and using your uh, hands as a guide, make uh, dices. And that's as easy as it gets when it comes to uh, dicing an onion. And just cut up all the way to the root and throw the root away. All right, so after you dice all your onions, uh, you need to saute them in some olive oil. So what I like to do is put them in my, uh, my mixing bowl. Makes it a lot easier to bring them over to the stove. And what we're going to do is we're just going to add a little bit of olive oil to the bottom of the skillet so we can saute the onions. I like to turn the heat up to about medium high heat. Add the onions and just let them uh, saute. Now the next ingredient is a uh, lamb or you could use beef. Uh, what I like to do is I have a uh, lamb shoulder chops, uh, bought them right on the bone and you just cut them into you know, big chunks. You know, you maybe an inch, maybe a half an inch of chunks, it really doesn't matter. However big you want your uh, lamb chunks to be when you're eating it. All right, after a few minutes, this is what the onions uh, look like. You can see they're a nice uh, golden brown. I've been uh, stirring them, you know, about once every minute or so, you know, just so they cook evenly and not just uh, cook them on, on the bottom. Uh, the next step is to add some meat. So I already have the meat chopped up. I'm gonna add it to my uh, bowl. And I'm going to bring it over to the pot. Drop it in. I already seasoned the onions, but now I wanna season uh, the meat. So add some salt to it. Add a little bit of uh, pepper. And some turmeric. All right, so this is the pot right now. I'm gonna lower the heat from a medium high to a medium heat. And make sure you spread all the meat evenly. And you gotta be uh, careful with the meat now because it has uh, some turmeric in it and the turmeric can burn. So I'm gonna be cooking this uh, at a medium heat for a few minutes just so the meat uh, takes on some color. And then after that, I'm just gonna add uh, some uh, water to it. All right, so the meat has been cooking for a few minutes. I didn't want to crowd the pan earlier uh, with the bones because I wanted the meat to brown really, really well. But since the meat's already browning pretty good, now I'm going to add the, the bones of the lamb and I'm going to mix them up. The meat has been cooking uh, for a little bit. You can see that the meat has put on a nice color. Uh, the meat on the bones has also changed a little bit of color. And uh, that's to let us know that we need to add some water now. So just add a few cups of water. Let's just add a little bit more water. And 
now you can see that the all the meat and the bones are covered with water because we're going to want to get them to be cooked if they're not covered with water they're not going to get cooked so what we're going to do now is we're going to turn up the heat to around a medium high heat uh, to get it to a simmer and then once it's at a simmer we're going to lower the heat to keep it at a simmer without cooking too high and we're going to put the cover on the pot and just let it cook now while the meat is cooking what it will do is we're going to start uh, cooking the herbs so what I did was I cleaned all my herbs. The best way to do it is to get like a big pot, something like this, fill it with water, and then shake the, all the herbs in it, and then take them out, and then do it you know, one or two more times until the water starts uh, coming clean. I took off the big woodsy stem of the parsley's, because uh, it's not, you don't really get much flavor from the stems. And then I'm just gonna chop up the parsley. I'm gonna add that to my big bowl. I did the same thing with uh, some cilantro, just chop it up. Now cilantro stems actually have a lot of uh, flavor on them, unlike the parsley uh, stems. However, you don't want to have that nice, you know, that woodsy texture to it. So you do want to chop off most of the stems of the cilantro still. And you only want the green parts of the green onion. Give them a nice uh, rough chop. We add that to the bowl as well. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna use my food processor to chop all these ingredients up. But if you didn't have a food processor, you'd be using your knife and you'd be chopping them for quite a while. So if you have a food processor, great. If you don't, you're gonna be doing a lot of chopping. All right, for the herbs, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put a oil in the skillet just to cover to the bottom, because we're gonna be sauteing the herbs in there. And while the skillet is warming up, I'm going to chop up my vegetables. Just chop away. It's easier to pulse it instead of doing it continuously, at least at first. And then once they're all finely chopped like that, like this, you just add them to the skillet. All right. You can hear that the, the vegetables here are uh, starting to saute right now. So what I'm so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the heat uh, to a medium heat. We don't need it to be too high. Just saute them nice and gently. And what we're going to do is we're just going to saute them until they get uh, nice and wilted and softened down. Now that while the herbs are cooking and also the beef is cooking. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cook uh, some black eyed peas. The black eyed peas also be in this dish. They're going to be mixed all together. All these are going to be mixed together. So you, you wash your black eyed peas with water, uh, drain them, and then you're going to add some water to it. All right, so I'm going to turn the black eyed peas heat up to about medium high heat. What I want it to do is get it to a boil. And then once it's at a boil, I'm going to let it simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes just to get them so they're a little soft but not too soft uh, because you're going to eventually finish cooking the beans and with the stew meat and the vegetables and don't forget to keep uh, stirring your herbs periodically one thing i like to do while the food is uh, cooking and it doesn't need my attention is i just start cleaning up the kitchen so when I'm, when i'm done cooking the kitchen is clean now you can see that the black eyed peas are boiling. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lower it to a, a medium low heat and partially cover the beans. You don't want to fully cover them because beans have a starch in them and starch when it boils it can create foam and it can over, overflow. And then just keep stirring your herbs every few minutes. All right, it's been about 30 minutes while the meat has been cooking. You can see that it's uh, still simmering. It's not a bad, bad idea to stir it periodically, make sure everything gets cooked evenly. You now the bottom of the bone may be getting cooked more than the top of the bone, but you can see the meat from the bone is already uh, separating. So I think it's time to go to the next step. 
So now that the herbs have been sauteing for about 20 minutes, and the beans are quite tender enough for me, I'm gonna take all of the herbs, I'm gonna add them to the stew. Then you wanna add your black eyed peas to the stew. Mix it around, make sure everything is in incorporated. And the next step is to add some dried limes. Let me show you what those look like. So these are dried limes. I have a, a couple of them over here. Let me show you the bag that they come in. This is one of the companies that sells them. It's called uh, Sadaf. They're basically just dehydrated limes. They add a completely unique flavor you can't get anywhere else. They add a sourness and a, a tartness and a flavor all on its own. What some people like to do is they like to take a fork and poke holes in it or sometimes they take a paring knife and do it. I think the paring knife is a little dangerous. What I found the easiest way to do is just get the back of your knife and just smash it a little bit. That one may have been smashed a little bit too hard, but it'll get the job done. And then after you do that to all of them, you want to put them into the pot with the meat. So you see this one is a little bit better. It has a little bit of holes already in it, not too much. Uh, as the other one had quite quite a bit and just add them to the pot So this is what the stew looks like with all of the ingredients uh, mixed together You want to make sure all the meat and bones are underneath uh, the water um, It's okay if the limes are not they're actually you know, they're filled with air So they're gonna be floating for now as they as they cook longer They're gonna get some water inside of them. So they then they will mix with the, the stew so what I want to do right now is turn up the heat to medium high heat to get the water uh, to a simmer and then once it's simmering I'm going to cover it and let it cook for about an hour. All right so the stew's been on the heat for about 15 minutes uh, simmering and while it was doing that I was cleaning the kitchen. So I, I cleaned all the counters, I swept the floor, I did all the dishes, I put everything away that needed to be uh, put away and uh, that's the best way to cook. Make sure you clean as you go, and by the time everything is done cooking, there would be nothing left to clean. So this is the stew after one hour of cooking. You can see it's getting nice and thick. This is about the consistency you want, maybe a little bit uh, less watery. So I'm gonna actually let it cook a little bit uh, with a cover off for about a half hour. One thing you wanna to do to get the right flavor though is it tastes, it tastes good, and I, I wanna put a little bit more salt, but it's also good to take these dried lemons and squeeze them to the side of the pot to release all the juices, to give all that nice flavor to the stew. That's a very, very important uh, step if you want this dish uh, to taste good. I also want the stew to be a little bit more sour or a citrusy flavor. So I'm gonna take uh, some uh, limes, actually just one lime, uh, squeeze the juice in there. And then see how it tastes. If it's perfect for me, I'll leave it that way, but everybody has their own preference of how sour they want it. The stew has been cooking for about 20 minutes now with the pot uncovered. And the sauce is at the consistency I want. It's not too thick, not too thin. Um, make sure you taste it for salt or any sourness and adjust that as, as you need it. So I made rice using a Persian rice cooker. Uh, that's the brand I bought, PARS. And the beauty of that is it makes the bottom of the rice look like this. Uh, that's why the, the name of the cookbook is called Bottom of the Pot, uh, because uh, we ha they can make a crispy bottom. Right on top of the crispy rice, also known as tadik. Make sure I get one lime and the food is uh, ready so there's the finished dish uh, you can see I have a uh, mint and the green onions those aren't for looks I actually like to eat those while I'm eating the stew and uh, I would prefer it to have some basil but my basil hasn't started growing yet I just planted it recently and I've tasted the stew and let me tell you the stew tastes perfect so the author of the book bottom of the pot this book over here Naz, she did a great job. It's very, very authentic, very tasty dish, very easy to make, very easy to follow instructions. So I encourage you to buy the book and enjoy some Persian food.